Hi there and a very warm welcome to 2024. I hope you had the best transitions and I wish you all the best for this new year. So this time we are starting with a small tutorial since I'm a bit rusty since the all the days that I didn't do tutorials and we are looking at distance based shading. So we are switching textures for example based on the distance of the camera. So let's keep on going and jump right in. All right, let me show you what we are going to do today. So we have this landscape and we want to switch the texture when we are close up so we have enough resolution. Let me show you. So when I travel to the landscape surface, the texture is switching. So it's blending into another texture. This is because I looked at some Unreal Engine tutorials and this is what they do most of the time. So to explain, we have a large texture here and if we would go near it, you can see the resolution isn't enough. And likewise, if we outside here and use the small texture, you can see even though we use a chaos texture, it is somehow repeating. So this would be nice if we have a close up shot but it is looking too inorganic when we are far away. So we use the best of both worlds and blend between the large scale texture when we move in to the small scale texture. For the sake of bit of fun, I made another thing and this is this here. So let's render that and let's see what happens if we zoom in. So it's happy 2024. And obviously the node tree is a lot bigger here. So if I zoom out here, I have every letter extra and then blend between it. This is not very practical, but I wanted to do it. To wish you another happy 2024. Here we go. As always, let's start from scratch. Well, basically scratch. I trust you, you can create a light source, a landscape and a diffuse material. I think this concept is along the lines of those ones who are very easy to execute, but you first have to think of it. But if you know it, it can be rather powerful. So let's go to the material here and bring in a texture. And this is one of my metal tiled textures here. This is surface imperfection basically. And if you're too lazy to follow along here, you can become a Patreon and just download the finished scene from my Patreon. The link is down in the description below. Let's keep the tradition alive and teach you even stuff that's not in the topic of the video, such as the chaos texture. So let me bring up a chaos texture here by hitting tab and then bring that into the stream. And you can see this is doing something to our output. And what it is that is doing is basically it chaotically moves the texture around and blends it together. So we lose the tiling effect if we have it smaller. To show you a little bit better, we can use show tile structure here and you can see how the tiles are aligned. One of the most useful features isn't even turned on here. So if we tick that off, this is just for presentation purposes so you can see what you're doing you can enable the rotation. And this next to offsetting the texture is also rotating it. Let's also set up the values here to make it look even better. So with the coverage, you can basically slide the tiles that you've seen back and forth and find the perfect alignment you want to have. So I tried this before and one is what I want to have. Then there's the blending exponent. And basically this is how harsh the blending is from one to the next tile. So if we make it rather high, you can see the tiles showing up. So I want to go the opposite way and actually also set it to one to get a very smooth blend. And this is basically our large scale texture done. Obviously you can use any dirt map and stuff like that for earth and grass and so on. So you can make this a lot more realistic and tune to the way you want to use it. This is just a concept overview basically, so you can see what it's actually doing. Now that we've made the large scale structure, let's make the small scale structure and it's really easy. 
So let's just duplicate those and plug this in so we can see what we're doing here. If I can manage to do so, here we go. And then we go to the chaos and add a UVW transform. And then basically we just scale it down. Here we go. And the amount of scale depends on how close you want to get with your camera. You can even use multiple textures as with the happy 2024 I showed you, but we will stick to two for now. So the chaos texture here is also doing its thing and it's looking rather diverse here. Let me just show you how it would look when we would use just a normal texture with the same transform. So you can see this is not what we want. It's a lot of tiling. So this is one of the effects the chaos texture has and it's looking a lot more randomized there. All right, so now to the big step, to the actual essence of this video. How do we blend those textures based on the camera distance? So when I was one day scrolling around through my notes and was wondering what all of those custom textures are, I saw the set depth in here. And basically this is the same set depth you can also output as a AOV, as a multi-layer pass. So I just got the node out of there and then used it inside of the texture. So let's see what it's doing. So when we just plug it in, you can see it has some values zero and one here. And if we go and zoom in here, you can see we have to get really close for it to get darker. Now we could do that when we go, for example, from one to two, move it further away. So now you can see better what's happening. And when I saw that, I was immediately hooked and tried to make the texture blending here, as I've seen that before in some Unreal tutorials. So to blend anything in here, we need a mix. So let's go with a mix. Here we go. And then what we need this set depth to do is be the blend amount. So let's see if we can hook it up the right way. Here we go, and here we go. And you can see that there's something wrong. It looks pretty different than if we would use one or the other texture in here. So it is basically working now. So if we move down here, you can see it is blending, but what is this strange look here? Basically what's happening is that the values that come in from the set depth aren't clamped. So they reach beyond one and this is what the mix texture can't really handle. So what we need to do is clamp that value here and to do so we can just use a range. So let's go and type in range. Here we go and use the second from top. Pipe that in here. The only thing we can use here is the clamp. And now you can see, wow, it's doing its job. And now the mix here is happy and giving us the right result. And basically that's already it. But we can of course use the min range and max range to determine when the blending is going to happen. So if we use very high values, so four to five, then we don't have to be as close as before. Also, if we use a larger distance between those, the blending is going to take a longer range. So if we go one to five, you have to travel much further to complete the blending. Also, this makes the blending a lot less obvious. So just to show you, if we go with 4.9 to five, you can see the blending is very obvious here. Distance based from the camera, of course. Since I can't really make quick tips and keep under 10 minutes, I guess I will show you a little bonus. Welcome to the bonus section. So what I'm going to show you here is another way to blend textures and not by distance, but by actual area. What I mean by that, so for example, if you have already determined your camera path and you want to end up here and you don't want to blend between textures, 
but just have a patch with the high res texture here. Of course, there's multiple ways to do that. You can use a vertex map, for example, instead of the range here to blend between them. But I want to show you a different approach. So let's go here and get another look at what's available. So this is one of those texture fields that came in lately. What I want to do is get a spherical field. Some of the times people ask me if it's possible to get fields from Cinema 4D fields inside of Octane. And while this is not possible, Octane has its own fields here. First of all, let me show you what this is doing. So let's just plug it into the diffuse and you can see since it's a spherical field, it creates a circle here on the plane. Now you can also use and adjust the fall off radius. So basically right now from the middle of the sphere to the rim, there's a fall off. But if we want to have a continuous circle, you just set this to 0.9, for example. So the fall off just is 0.1 unit. Also, if you make this one bigger than the other, then let me just do that by hitting two, then we get a very sharp edge here. So you can play around with this. For example, if we want to have a bigger area here, we can just use other numbers. Now let's make this 1.5 and the other one two. So we get a little bit of a feathered edge and you can already know where this is going. So I want to just put that into my mix instead of the fall off, instead of the set depth here. And now you can see it's the other way around than what we want. And this is the high res texture is on the rim and where it's white, there's the low res texture. So we just have to flip those. So now we have the high res texture here. The sphere right now is appearing on the center of the object. This might not be where you want it. So if we wanted to move over here, there are actually options. So what I want to do is go to projection here and then to our old friend XYZ to UVW. And you can see there is a slot where you can link objects. So what I'm going to do is create a null and use that as our pointer. So let's just drag it in here and nothing is happening because the null is at the same axis location at our landscape. But when we move our null, you can see now we are moving the field around as well. So if we want to have the field here, you can just move it there and then be good with it. And then if our camera moves here, there's no blending, but we have a patch with the high res texture. One small note. So if I decide to move my landscape, you can see the patch is staying with it. And this is because we are using local textures in here. So when we go to position and go to object space and actually set it to world space, now we can move our landscape and thus our null object isn't moved with it. You can see it here or better yet when we just plug it in here then the actual positioning is correct. So our sphere is basically always where our null object is right now. And this is basically it. I hope you liked this video and this week's tutorial. It's a very short one, but I hope it gave you some ideas you can just play around with in the future. If you have any ideas for future tutorials, please write it in the comments. Now I want to thank my Patreons for making those videos possible and I want to thank them again for a very successful 2023 and hopefully on to a new successful year where I can make my living or more of my living using Patreon. Thanks so very much for my 50 Euro T subscribers Chiels Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. Thank you both so much for having my back. Also, a huge thanks for my 15 euro tier subscribers Abraham, AB Studio, Alessio De Vecchi, Alex Wilson, Bavana, BVR, Christian Grajewski, Computer Generated, Etienne Schmidt, Erbe Academy, George Luna, Harish Pavaskar, Choi Chikoline, 
just a freaking Chris Clemson, Ludger, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Quark and Dang, Raiko, Reshock, Rory H, Shamus Johnson, Terry Wayne Ranson, Yasin Rupp, and Shibur Shang. Thank you all so very much. As always, if you're still watching, thank you so much for sticking with me that long. Let's post a calendar emoticon in the comment section below for the new year and the ever changing perspective in life. And with that, I wish you a great start into the week, a good time, and happy blending. Bye.